Welcome to the Health, Habits, and Epic Living Podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Sherry Price. The goal of this podcast is to educate and enable empowered women to take the next step towards achieving their health, wellness, and lifestyle goals. Let's get started. Hello, my beautiful friend. I hope you are having a magical day. I am so excited. I wanted to let you know that my website has been redone. And I think it looks amazing. And so if you are wanting to work with me, look at all my programs, I have them so nicely outlined now, and the site just feels so good. And I also wanted to let you know that I have a new way of working with me one-on-one. So you can read all about it there on my website at epicu.com. And when you click under the work with me section, you will see all the different programs that I offer from healthy eating to stop over drinking and group coaching, individualized coaching, all of that is there for you if you are wanting more and it's feeling aligned to work with me. I also want you to know coming up, I am launching again, IF 45 for women. I know that as we roll into spring, many of us are thinking, oh, spring, finally, it's here. And then that means summer is right behind that. And a lot of women start worrying about how they're going to look in the summertime, how that bikini is going to fit or that bathing suit. And so I want to help you learn how to fuel your body for the best an optimal outcome for your health. So intermittent fasting is a wonderful tool. I've talked about it here on the podcast of the so many benefits it has, even beyond weight loss or maintaining a healthy weight. It is how our ancestors ate. It is how we evolved to eat. And somewhere along the way in our modern day society, we got away from really understanding how to fuel our body. I also blame the diet culture industry on that because it talks about grazing and stoking your metabolism and all the things that actually don't work and has made us heavier and more obese as a society. And since we know that less than 7% of people are metabolically flexible, I feel this is a one tool you can use and I will teach you others in the program where you can become metabolically flexible. And that means you are burning your own fat for fuel. So you're not just learning how to eat healthy, but you're also learning if you have fat to burn, how to eat so you are digesting your own fat and burning it off. You're banishing belly fat. You're banishing your sugar cravings. And I hear from so many women, and I've experienced it myself, that when you go through the change, the perimenopausal time, you know, that five to 15 years before you actually hit menopause, when women traditionally start gaining weight, When our estrogen starts changing into estrone and that puts on adipose tissue, particularly around the abdomen, that when they institute this way of eating, their body composition changes. So as a big proponent of health, I want to teach you and educate you. And really, probably you have to unlearn a lot that you learned from the diet industry about what works for fueling a healthy body, fueling your mitochondria to develop more mitochondria, and changing your white fat into brown fat. And we know that how we eat will also determine the neurotransmitters that we make and so how we feel. We all can experience that, right? When we overdo it with sugar, when we overdo it with alcohol, our body will tell us that was not good. (laughs) And so in this 45-day program, you are going to get me daily, daily accountability, daily education, daily snippets about how to fuel your body, how to banish belly fat, how to develop a stronger, healthier, optimal health become more resilient to infections. This is also about anti-aging and slowing that decline. And here's why I'm so passionate about IF45 for women is that all of us have to eat. It's not like we can avoid food. And actually, if you starve yourself, your body will hold on to more fat, particularly when you're north of 40. That may have worked in our 20s, but that will no longer work once you're north of 40. And it all has to do with the biochemical hormone cascade that goes on in our body, which you will learn about inside IF45. So this is 45 days with me. I'll be teaching. There's live Zoom calls as well with me where I can address any questions that you have. You'll also be getting access to a workbook that breaks down what intermittent fasting is, troubleshooting questions, a grocery list, 
sample recipes to make, a daily journal, and also included will be some video tips around eating and healthy lifestyle habits. So we get started on April 7th. That is a Sunday. That is when I let everybody into the Facebook group. And we really start diving in on how to treat our bodies with the necessary care and nutrition for it to flourish. If you are interested in this program and this is resonating with you, go to my website, epicu.com, and you could click on IF45 and join there. And I will also be mailing out a copy of a book to you if you live within the continental United States that's going to dive more into this information. I am so excited about this program. Every woman that has walked to this program has noticed tremendous benefit to her sleep, to her body composition, and feeling more energized. I also wanted to let you know this may be the last time I do this group. So if you have been interested and have been sitting on the fence, now is the time to join. And again, we get started on April 7th. And also what's going on here at Epic U, inside the Epic U membership, you can get coaching and it is my monthly membership program. And I wanted to let you know for April, we are going to be focusing on the topic of time management. I can promise you that you have way more time than you think. Now, I could also tell you that you may not have enough time to get everything you want to get done, but you can prioritize what needs to get done and you can get done what you prioritize. I wanna teach you ways that you can create more time to get the things that you want to get done. And for a lot of women I hear, it's around taking care of themselves. They put other people before their needs. Are there so many tasks to get done that, oh my gosh, I just put aside that thing that I wanted to do for me, whether it was go to the gym or eat healthy, or get this goal, start this project, and I just can't seem to do it because everything else bubbles up and gets in the way. So I love this topic so much. We are going to be deep diving into time management and how you use your time because when you can use your time to prioritize what's most important for you, you become way more fulfilled with life. And that is a fact, right? It's kind of like back to that Stephen Covey principle, keep the main things the main things. And so many of us slip up in that category. So I want to show you how with these simple tools that we talk about in the videos and on our coaching calls. I no longer want time to be a barrier for you living and being your best self. So if you are interested in this time management topic, please join us in April inside of the Epic U membership and you'll watch your life transform. All right, now I want to dive into what I want to talk about today. And I have to tell you, I was coaching on this topic and it came up on three different calls that I had yesterday. And it was such a good topic because everybody was struggling with it. And today I'm still in the afterglow of like the ahas the women had after we talked about this topic. So I want to bring you this information because it was so transformative for the women I was talking with yesterday and coaching. And I feel if this information can help one person, let's share it with more. Now, a lot of people will join my coaching containers or some of the programs because they're looking for change. They're looking to embrace change. And as I talked about, and as we know, change can be hard. It can be daunting. It can be fearful. It can bring up so many things. It can make us feel like I tried this before and it's not working and I keep trying and I keep failing, right? Change can be so triggering for people. And partly it is, you know, hard, right? And I, that's why I wanted to embrace change this year. You know, change is my word of the year for 2024. I mean, even like, changing my website was a little bit like, oh, what if I don't like it? What if it's not going to look good? And now I'm like, oh, but the website looks so amazing. I'm so glad we did those changes. But going through it, there's decisions to make. How are things going to look? How's it going to play out? And so change could be fun. It could be emotional. It could be taxing, right? There's so many emotions could come up with change. And I want a mindset and cultivate a mindset where I accept that. And that exactly what was coming up on the calls yesterday is this concept of acceptance. Now, sometimes when you hear the word acceptance, what comes up for you? How do you feel? Is that a good word? Is that a neutral word? 
Is that a negative word? Because I find for many people that is not a good word. They do not have good association with the word acceptance. It feels like it's passive. It feels like it's just okay. It's really not that good. It's like, oh, if I accept this, it means I'm giving up. It means I'm just taking a back seat and not doing anything about it. Very passive process. And I've even heard some people describe it as, I feel like it's a resignation. If I say I just accept something, I'm resigning. And that's undesirable. But to me, that is not the true meaning of acceptance. That to me is more like I'm throwing in the towel and just not caring. Right? I don't care about the outcome. I'm just going to accept life as it is. I'm done trying. I'm just going to sit here and wallow. And that is really not the definition of acceptance. If you look up the definition, one of the definitions is the process of being received as adequate or suitable. Now think about that. The process of being received as adequate or suitable. How many women look at themselves and receive themselves as adequate or suitable? Another way you could say this is that you're enough, right? Adequate is a sense of being enough. It's adequate. It's enough. I've had adequate amount of water today. I've had enough water today. Or I had a suitable amount of water today for my body and my exercise level. Now that is how I look at acceptance. I'm suitable. I'm enough. I'm adequate. Now, when I say that, it's not saying I'm resigning and that's it and I'm not doing anything else to improve. In fact, I'm accepting myself and also I could say I want things to change. So when I'm thinking about acceptance, I'm like, oh, here's where I am. I'm meeting myself where I'm at. I'm perfectly okay, safe, things are well. I've got good health, but maybe I want to go to the next level. Maybe I want to push myself. Maybe I want to challenge myself. Maybe I want to grow spiritually. Maybe I want to grow stronger and physically. Maybe I want to get mental fortitude and grow stronger mentally. Maybe I want to really become more emotionally resilient. I see that my emotions take me away from going to the gym or they get in the way with what I'm going to make for dinner because I just say I don't feel like it. And my feelings seem to derail me. So when I'm thinking about acceptance, I'm saying, oh, here's what I am. Here's where I'm at. And yet I still may want to change and improve. Because what I think is the opposite of acceptance and what most people are thinking is acceptance is actually rejection, not wanting to be where you're at, fighting with yourself. Oh, what the scale says, I don't want to be here. That's rejection. So when you're not accepting of what is or where you're at or the truth of the matter, notice if you get mad and angry because you feel like, these sentences pop up into your mind. Oh, I was dealt this lot in life. Or I can't believe this happened to me. Things should have been differently. This shouldn't have happened. I entered this marriage and I wanted it to last and it's not. I'm not getting treated the way I wanted to. And it came up on some of our calls yesterday, right? One woman says, I'm just done rejecting myself. I really want to accept myself. I want to accept myself at my weight. I want to learn how to love being in my skin. And yet, if I still want to improve, I will. But not doing it from a place of self-loathing, berating myself, beating myself up for a bad meal, beating myself up for over drinking, or having an extra glass of alcohol that I didn't plan. I'm just done with doing that. And she noticed when she steps into this acceptance, the beautiful thing that happens is there's a peace and a calm. And that's not demotivating. Actually, it's she's finding it way more motivating. And the same thing that happened with my other client, where she had overdone it with her drinking. And I said, well, what if we didn't berate yourself and we could just accept that this happened? She goes, wow, you're inviting in so much more peace and more calmness into my life. And I said, yes, that is possible. That's possible for everybody to do. And she goes, wow, I no no longer want to stay in the covers and hide from the world and be embarrassed and ashamed. 
now that opens me up to want to do good things. And I stopped exercising since I overdrank because I was feeling so bad about myself. And now this gives me hope that I want to go and exercise. I actually want to get off the phone with you right now and go exercise. And so this to me is the power of acceptance. Because otherwise, if we're rejecting ourselves, we wind up rejecting everything. Rejecting a healthy lifestyle, rejecting getting out of bed, rejecting this part, that part. I was just sharing with the ladies in Epic U about there was one part of my life that I was rejecting and it didn't dawn on me I was rejecting it. And it's a silly example, but it's real, right? No matter how small, we never want to minimize our problems because if we minimize them, we really don't get under the hood and look at them. And so I'm noticing as I'm transitioning in perimenopause that my hair is thinning, that my forehead is growing. (laughs) These are not changes that I want. These are not changes that I was embracing. I was wanting to fight it and say, oh, this can't be happening. And I'm getting mad at it. And it's preventing me from showing up how I want to show up. I want to do more videos on my Instagram page. And it was preventing me from doing that. And I'm like, wait a second. Why am I rejecting this? This is just part of the process. Now, I could go on to do things to fill in my hair, right? I could do extensions. I'm doing this hair serum I'm trying. Maybe I can even do a wig. Some of these I'm not ready to do, and some of them I am. But notice if I keep rejecting that part of me, it keeps me playing smaller than what I really want to play. I want to play full out in life. I don't know how many more days I have, so why not play full out? And I'm sure when I'm doing these videos, you, if you're watching them on Instagram or my YouTube channel, you're not thinking I have a big forehead. It's just me in my own head, right? We are our own worst critic. And so dropping that rejection of what is happening and what is, and then fully accepting it, now I can say, okay, this is happening. And do I want to do something about it? And what do I want to do about it? Am I willing to do the hair extensions or put more hairspray in or whatever to make my hair look fuller? So if you look at like Buddhist traditions or psychology, or even, you know, AA, they talk about the power of acceptance. It helps really to reduce what people experience as negative. And this is part of the solution of improving the quality of your life. It's not the only thing, but it's part of the solution. And as the Gottman Institute and other psychology powerhouses have talked about, that the brain responds more positively to positive thoughts and positive feelings. Because you're not allowing that baggage to weigh you down to actually take the steps you want to be taking in life. So for my one client who overdrank, even though that happened four days ago, she was still allowing it to impact her life four days later. Because she wasn't accepting that it happened. She was rejecting herself. She was rejecting that and trying to push it away and fighting with herself rather than accepting what is and saying, okay, now what? How can I be okay with that and still see that I want to change and improve and still see that I'm on my healing journey and that was just a blip on my healing journey. This also came up for one of my Tone in 10 clients that I'm working with right now. And her desire is really to be stronger, stronger physically, stronger mentally, stronger emotionally, and really stronger spiritually. And this word stronger keeps coming up for her. And she's like, this is about accepting where I am. And I do have some strength, but I also want to get more strength. And she described it beautifully. She says, it's like I'm coming from this place of abundance where I know I am already enough. I know I am adequate, but that I desire more. I desire more for my life. I desire more spiritually, more mentally. I want more mental fortitude. I'm growing older and events are happening around me that are kind of negative. She went to a funeral of a best friend. Another friend got diagnosed with stage four cancer. And she's like, I want to live out my days as strong as I can. And it's not about rejecting myself. It's saying I want more for myself because I'm worth it. I deserve it. And if I've got my health, I want to keep it. That's acceptance. That is knowing what is and knowing where you want to go and where you want to be and having faith and trust in the process like she does. That was such a beautiful example that I felt it was so important to share that message with you. 
And so know that acceptance is always available to you. I notice that when people don't accept what has happened or when they're trying to fight and believe something that is not true, they enter this blaming and shaming game and they wind up actually doing more self-sabotaging behaviors. As one client said yesterday, by me rejecting what is actually happening in my life is causing me more pain than just accepting it because I'm overeating. I'm not exercising. I'm packing on the pounds. I can't put on my pants. I have to move up a size in my pants and I don't want to move up a size because I keep rejecting what is. And so I'm rejecting myself and I know better than that. And I'm willing to do better than that. And I said, when you reject yourself, how does that feel? And of course it feels terrible. It feels terrible to berate yourself and put yourself down and put your goals and dreams on hold. It feels like punishment that you think you're bad when actually you're not. You're not bad. You're human. And when we don't capture our brain before it spirals or when it's spiraling, and we just let the brain go out of control, notice it'll keep spiraling. And that's where change becomes harder and harder to come by. And my friends, I urge you to reach out for help, whether that's a friend, a loved one, a coach, a therapist, reach out for help because nobody wants to stay in the downward spiral. Because then you keep repeating your past, you keep rejecting what is, it keeps you feeling awful, and then you want to do more soothing mechanisms like drinking or eating or scrolling or buying on Amazon or all the ways that we could get that quick dopamine hit that makes us feel good in the moment, but long-term never satisfies and never fulfills. So I think this is a beautiful way and a great tool you can use to help yourself. Because what would it look like for you to accept yourself? Ask yourself that. To know that you're adequate. To receive yourself as enough. To know that you're suitable as is. And if you thought that way about yourself, how would that make you feel? Sit with that a minute. How does that make you feel? You're enough. You're suitable. You're adequate. Now go do life the way you want to do it. Now, if you accept yourself just as you are, is there anything you would want to change? Because you love yourself, because you care about yourself, and because you deserve it. But it's really getting to that acceptance piece that allows you to get to the next part, allows you to invite in change that feels good. When I was going to the gym at a punishment, like, oh, here, I got to go to the gym. I got to get in my three to five days a week. I got to, I got to, got to. I'm not considered a healthy person until I do. Right? That was all coming from rejecting that I'm healthy right now, as is. That I was okay right now, as is. And it was coming from scarcity and lack rather than, oh my gosh, I get to work out today. How amazing is it that my legs still move? My arms still move. I could still hula hoop. If you saw that video on Instagram, right? I get to move my body. And my body, surprisingly, when I ask it, wants to move. It doesn't feel good sitting in a chair eight hours out of the day. It needs to get up and move. It tells me, like, I can't sit here any longer. Let's move. So I want to tell you that acceptance, my friend, is not a passive process, not at all. It requires thinking, it requires mental energy. It requires you to get honest with yourself. That's not a passive process. This takes energy. It takes effort. It takes action. It's a very active process. This is not throwing in the towel and rejecting yourself. This is about accepting the version of you as is and seeing if you want to create a different version of you in the future. How beautiful is that? This is the opposite of acting on autopilot. This is about being intentional. Because I'll tell you what, not everybody does this process. Not everybody wants to do this process. It takes energy from within to even want to work and execute this. And I'll leave you with this. Acceptance is knowing inside that you are fine the way you are and that you can still want and desire or seek more change. And when you go about that change, if you stop rejecting yourself and start accepting yourself, you'll find that the change is much easier to get. So where in your life do you want to stop rejecting and start accepting? Where do you want to welcome in peace and calm rather than resistance and fighting with yourself? And for like my one client, 
She wants to stop stepping on the scale and making that number mean something about her. And she just wants to keep exercising because it feels good. And it provides community and camaraderie. And it's just simply fun to do. And she's incredibly consistent with it. And by dropping into that acceptance, she realizes, hmm, the number on the scale really doesn't mean much about my overall health. It's just one data point, and it's not even the most accurate data point for overall measure of health. So my friends, I want to leave you with accepting what is. And still, if you want to change from there, that's great. And that's different vibrational energy that you will be able to carry forth to embrace and get the change you want. If you want help with this process, I'd love to help you. Because the process of change can be so much easier and so much more fun. All right, my friend, stay epic, and I will see you in the next episode. Thanks for listening to the Health Habits and Epic Living Podcast. If you're ready to take the next step to improve your health, wellness, and lifestyle goals, head over to www.epicu.com and sign up for my weekly newsletter. Again, that's E-P-I-C-Y-O-U.com. Please note that the information in this podcast is for educational purposes only and does not constitute medical advice.